Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to show you my 2022 lawn care setup. A lot of it's going to be the same as it was last year, but I do think I've made some changes and some equipment upgrades that might make me a little bit more efficient. I also want to talk about why I went with the stand-on mowers versus the sit-down, and what my plans are for this business in 2022. So I think we'll start up at the front and just work our way around the trailer. So we'll start with my tow vehicle. This is the 2022 Ram 2500 Laramie Night Edition. And it's completely overkill for a lawn mowing trailer. It's probably even not the most efficient to have a truck this size, but I do a lot of other things. I pull a dump trailer, I pull a tractor, and I need this for that, and I'm not gonna own two trucks. If you're a truck guy and you just want to see everything that's new or cool features about a 2022 Ram that's pretty much fully loaded, I will put a link at the end of this video to the Ram review. The very first thing is I've switched to this truck from a Ram 1500 and the back of the trailer is sitting low even with my 6 inch drop, so I'm probably going to put an 8 inch drop hitch on this to level it out. As far as the actual trailer and mowing equipment, the first thing on the back corner is a tool rack. And on here I've got tools for the combi system, like this edger, there's a pole saw, usually a shovel and a rake, things like that, and also an extension for the pole saw. I was on the fence about the combi system, but I've had absolutely no problem with the combi system heads or any of the attachments, and this will be my fourth year since I bought all all of this combi system attachments. Just as reliable as buying standalone units without the cost of maintaining that many extra power heads. Now we're a couple weeks away from mowing season at least, but the reason I'm going through this all today and making sure everything's set up properly is because I know there are a couple of issues I have to address, and if nothing else, it's a good thing to make sure everything's gonna start you know, run a little fuel through all of your power heads and your mowers and make sure you've got good sharp blades on so that the first time you want to mow, you're not spending a full day doing that. As I go through and round everything up and make sure everything's in good shape, the first problem I have is the other half of this sure cage is missing. I use these sure cans for my mix and my gas. This is the mix and it's got another half of this cage that comes across it and you can just pull this lever right here and fill your, your mix fuel without picking up the can. I think that's really handy, but at some point I've misplaced the other half of that cage and I'm gonna have to replace that. I also didn't realize it till I started the camera, but I took my spare tire off and used it on one of my other trailers at one point. Then I got new tires for that trailer and my spare is up in the shed, so I need to get the spare tire on. This is, my regular gas works exactly the same way. You can just tip the hose down, you just pull this handle. I think these sure cans are a great setup. If you notice a theme throughout the trailer, the majority of what I run comes from Ballard Inc. It's mostly manufactured by Green Touch. There's other brands out there, but I've been really happy with these. It's not sponsored, I'm not affiliated with it, them in any way. Just, just, I've been using them a while, they work. So I've got a, a reel here for the trimmer line. Actually got it a little tight right now. Okay, you unspool that. If you don't want it to turn anymore, you tighten it down and it's got a cutter on the side. Works pretty good. The next thing is a utility cage. These can be used for different things. I keep a small handheld blower in here. This is a steel BG86. The idea is to have a smaller one. If you only have a little bit of blowing to do, it's not worth it to put the big backpack blower on. Next thing is the weed eaters. I carry two with me because I've never taken more than one person with me to mow, and these are combi system, so you can put different heads on them. I don't see a reason for more than two. These are both KM91 trimmer heads. That's the same trimmer as an FS91 if you get a fixed unit. The way this rack works is you've got a handle here, you pull the handle, and then this pops out. 
Most of you are probably familiar with a combi system, but if you're not, all you do is turn this knob right here and your power head pulls off. Then you can put your pole saw or your edger or whatever else you might want to use on there. Okay, then go to put it up, slide that in there. Every time you turn this, you want to make sure that you push in every unit you have because hypothetically you can pull this one out and the other one slips out a little bit and it locks like that and you're not in. So when I turn this, I check all three of them and then turn it back. Really nothing special about the back ramp, but I'll go ahead and put it down because I'm going to go up there in a minute. I thought about getting one of the gate assist. It's kind of handy so you don't have to lift down and, and lift the weight of the gate at every stop. But I've already got stuff mounted in that spot, so I haven't actually done that. As I go down this side of the trailer, I've got two toolboxes here, and they work just like the other racks. You got this handle right here, you twist it, that unlocks. On any of these, there's a padlock right here. You just push it in and you're locked. They all use the same key. Very convenient. So in here, I've got hearing protection, gloves, extra weed eater heads, extra mower blades. I've got a pruning knife. And inside here, I've got a variety of tools. We've got a utility knife, screwdriver, wire cutters, pliers, crescent wrench. Got this tool that clamps on the deck to make changing mower blades easier. Extra chain for the pole saw. Edger blades. Got a cobalt socket set. And this is kind of a variety of tools. We've got some adapters for different brands of weed eater heads. The tool that you use to change the heads on the weed eater. Some, some clips and pins, just a variety of things that you might need out here. Okay, second toolbox. I've got cones, two six packs of fuel mix, some ratchet straps. I've got some extra air filters, towels, just kind of a, a mix of stuff in here. Next thing we've got that I most of the time carry with me is a small chainsaw. It's a top handle saw. It's convenient if you're tired of mowing under these tree branches that are in your way every time. You just say, you know, ask the customer, hey, do you mind if I trim these? Most of the time, they're going to be just fine. It's you're doing maintenance for them, but you're making your own job easier by getting those out of the way. This cage is basically the same as the utility cage over there that has the blower in it. You pay a little bit extra if you want the locking lid, whereas that one has a bar that goes across to keep your tool in. These are a little bit bigger than the tool, so I put the bar oil next to the saw, and now it doesn't rattle around. It's got the same latch. Works great. And I've got a backpack sprayer right here, and a backpack blower right here. This blower is unbelievable. The amount of power out of them, it's a steel BR-800C. The difference with the 800C is it has this side start. And that means if you're blowing and the customer comes out to talk to you, you don't have to take your backpack off and restart it. You hit the kill switch on your trigger, and then when you're done talking, you just pull this from your side right here and starts right back up. It's a little finicky to get the hang of how the uh, pull start works on the side, but once you get it down, works great. I mow with two John Deere stand-on mowers. Why? Because I just grew up liking John Deere. I've got a John Deere tractor. The dealership's been easy to work with. I've not had any problems with the machines. If someone else wants to tell me they don't like Deere mowers, perfectly fine. Your mowers might be better than mine, and that's okay, but these are getting the job done for me. Now, why do I have stand-on mowers? It's because sitting on a mower and then standing back up is not any fun for me. The sit-down mowers are hard on my back. I find these more comfortable, more maneuverable, and easier on my back. They're a shorter radius, shorter turning radius, shorter wheelbase, means you can 
follow the contour of like a rock bed or whatever kind of landscaping is is at the house you're mowing at and just do a better job of that i've also got the tweels on it and rubber solid front wheels on both mowers tweels on the 52 inch and that means i've only got two pneumatic tires to worry about I think the tweels are fantastic. Maybe some people who've put 10,000 hours on them and had a failure would give a different review, but I've been mowing with them for a couple years. I've been really happy with them. Besides the fact they never go flat, they give you a really comfortable ride, and they get a little bit better traction, I think. I have a 52-inch mower on the back that I do 90% of my mowing with. Then I've got a 36-inch mower on the front that I occasionally use for narrower areas. If I mowed 100 yards a week, I probably would have this mower and I might actually have a wider sit down or another wider standing mower because this is not the fastest mower out there. It's only 52 inches and your top speed on your stand on mowers is normally a little less than it is on your sit down mowers. So if you're really driving for efficiency, you might be better off with a sit down mower. So why do I have this 36? Number one, the idea in my mind is that I would need it a lot to get into narrower back gates. That hasn't really been the case. There are a couple places where I'm glad to have it, but not as much as I thought. The second reason is I have a little tree farm I'm starting up here, and my spacing between the rows as the trees get bigger is gonna be really tight, and I think that narrow mower is gonna be handy for that. So. If you're interested in these mowers, I've got separate videos just about these stand-on mowers. I've got two more pieces of equipment to show you, and then we'll talk about changes I'm considering for next year. Next thing I've got is this Honda push mower. It's a Honda HRX217. It's a $700 push mower is what it is. Model GCV190. I read a lot of hype about the Honda mowers, and this has been the best push mower I've ever owned. But is it worth $700? Not to me. I think this is perfect for someone who's obsessed with a perfectly cut yard, and I'm not really that guy, even though you would think I should be since I cut some yards as a side business. I just don't feel like it's that much better than a regular push mower. The mower has dual blades. One's just slightly offset to the other one, and there's a lower cutting and a higher cutting, and it does cut better. Then the next thing is this speed control system. So obviously it's a self-propelled. You've got a dial right here, determines how much it propels. If you're on flat ground and you turn that on high, you'll jog to keep up with this. It'll even propel itself up a hill, so. You know, as I say that, it sounds more and more like maybe it is worth that much money. But I kind of felt stupid after buying it and cutting a couple times and said it's still just a push mower. But I guess I can see where, it, where that extra value is. It also has kind of an interesting selector here for this is mulch. Turn this over. It's bag. And then you can go to like six spots in between for what percentage of your clippings do you want mulched and what percentage do you want bagged. I actually think that's really handy too, depending on how thick the grass is, is it wet? Maybe you just want to bag half of it and mulch half of it because you can't always mulch 100%. Last thing that I don't normally take with me, and this one and that one both have the cover for the breather knocked off, so I've got to order two new breather covers. But this is a Husqvarna Walk Behind Weed Eater got the real thick line on it and you can use it like a miniature brush hog. I only use this occasionally but when I do it's really handy. Now for potential changes and I just walked by and noticed one other thing I didn't mention. If you do a lot of weed eating, string trimming, whatever it is you like to call it, you want a Darwin's grip. That's just my opinion especially if you're a tall guy. It's got two articulation points and allows you to hold your trimmer in a more comfortable position. However you like to stand, you can adjust it to fit the way you like to stand. Because for me, if I pick up a string trimmer, a straight shaft string trimmer, 
and try to use it without that, I'm bent over in an uncomfortable position and that gets old after a little while. Now for changes, right now I've got this heavy gauge cutting wheel on the head. I don't use that a whole lot. That's almost same category as the walk behind weed eater. But down here is a steel brand speed feed head. The whole time I've been mowing, I've been using these steel heads that come with the trimmers. And they're all getting messed up. Like this one right now doesn't want to pop out. I'm starting to have to fight with them a little bit. And what I would do is I've got like six of those. And every night before we had to mow, we would wrap all our line up on it. Or first thing in the morning, we'd wrap line on all of them, get them set up and ready. And then you just pop the heads off every time you run out of line. And I was never spooling line at someone's house or while we're mowing. But... Several people have told me that speed feed heads are better and all my products are steel for no particular reason. I started with the brand, I stuck with the brand. Actually, I, I have steel because my John Deere dealership where I bought all my tractors and mowers and all my attachments, they sell steel. So I bought steel. And that makes it more convenient if I need mower parts and uh, parts for my weed eater they're at the same place. But everyone tells me Echo makes the best speed feed head. So I just bought this Echo speed feed head today. Haven't even tried it out. At the end of last year, I got frustrated with one of my regular heads. And I bought this steel brand speed feed head. So I'm going to be comparing the Echo and the steel branded speed feed heads in a future video. You know, once we've got 50 hours of cutting on one of these and we can really see how it performs. The next thing I'm thinking about changing is adopting some electric tools. I'm going to stick with the gas power heads for the trimmers, but for the blowers, I've got the big backpack blower. We use it on three-fourths of our jobs. Some places we go, it only takes 30 seconds to blow off the grass, and it feels unnecessary putting that backpack on. So that's why we carry this little blower. But I'm thinking about replacing that little blower with this one. So occasionally, it takes you a few minutes to get one of these, you know, gas blowers to start. And you never have that issue here. There's no starting. You push the button, it blows. It's... Pretty handy. So I'm considering going to this. But if I do, it means carrying a charger and a couple batteries with me. Now I think these batteries will go through a whole day no problem, but you still want to have the ability to charge you know, on hand. Now I do have inverters in the truck, 400 watt in the bed and in the cabin, so I can do that. The other thing is, so this is a 60 volt chainsaw, 60 volt blower, and I've already compared this chainsaw as having more power than that top handle chainsaw. So this, as a replacement, to me, I think it's either both or neither. If I'm going to take batteries, I'm going to take both of these tools with me. Those are just a couple small changes. Now, big picture for me and mowing yards. I want to be in the tractor work business. So I don't know how much tractor work I'm going to be able to get. I'm looking at trying to advertise and bring in more business and stay on tractor work all the time. And if that's the case, I will, I would rather be doing that than this. And when I bought this setup, it was my intention to do a lot of yards. But what ended up happening is I got a tractor and I'd rather be doing that. So I'm only going to service the existing customers I already have. I'm not looking for new customers. The only exception is my preference for mowing. I would like to have two big accounts that or businesses or larger properties that take like all day to mow. I think that would be a better way to do it in my mind rather than having a lot of customers that you have to contact every time it rains or there's an issue and collecting the money that way. So that's where I'm going to try to steer with this business. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links over here to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.